Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Wednesday Wisdom on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with our Wednesday Wisdom guest, but we want to give a shout out to our partners. We Coach, the Florida Coaches Coalition, Vital Signs Wall of Fame, and the Global Community of Women in High School Sports. These are four great organizations. You should really add them to your network. And now, don't hit that fast forward button. Stay with us for the next three minutes. Uh, we're going to give our sponsors a shout out. These are all companies that I used as an AD or as a coach. You should be using them too. Here we go. We want to thank Vital Signs Wall of Fame for their support. Go to their website, vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their interactive touchscreen video consoles. They're great ways to display your school record boards for all the teams, for all the sports, or your school's Hall of Fame, or just to share your school's history, your proudest moments, and your top student athletes. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com to get started. We want to thank Home Campus for their support. Home Campus is the exclusive high school and state association management platform for us. It's also your one-stop platform for things like scheduling, student athlete eligibility and clearance, coaches clearance, and a whole lot more. As an athletic director, I used Home Campus every single day, and it was just great. To find out more about how Home Campus can help you and your program, all you have to do is go to homecampus.com. That's homecampus.com. We also want to thank Sideline Interactive indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com, schedule a live web demo, see their tables and their boards in action. Their products not only generate income for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. That's sidelineinteractive.com. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Hometown is digital ticketing that offers more, more support, more security, and more customization. Go to hometownticketing.com to get started. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Go to huddle.com. Change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, and it was just great. But when I became a athletic director, I made sure that our school was a huddle school. And our coaches just love the tools that huddle provided that helped them coach our kids up to the highest level. It was a complete professional grade solution. Go to huddle.com, see why we believe in sports and teams believe in huddle. Join the 8 million users, turn your school into a huddle school. We also want to say thanks to Snap Mobile. Go to Snap raise.com that's the website and check out their entire suite of platforms designed to help you do your job better from a fundraising standpoint snap raise is hands down the best one out there but there's a lot more you've got snap manage snap store snap connect and a whole lot more go to snapraise.com to check them all out that's snapraise.com we also want to thank gipper Go to Gipper.com, start creating custom content for your school's social media channel. It's so easy, even I can use it. Your students are on social media, and if you're not promoting your athletes, celebrating their accomplishments, you're really missing out. Go to Gipper.com, let their pros show you how easy it is to do it. That's Gipper.com. And we want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Athletic surveys are a quick, easy, and an affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire program. Athletic directors already hear back from the complainers, the 2% that want to gripe about everything. Athletic surveys connect you with the 2%, but they also connect you with the 98% that supports your program. And that's a tremendously valuable tool to have when you're talking with a frustrated parent or your principal or your school board. Go to athleticsurveys.com. They're going to create a custom survey that's going to let you take the pulse of your parents and your student athletes. That's athleticsurveys.com. Let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to another segment of Wednesday Wisdom 
on the Educational AD Podcast. We've got one of our uh, original Wednesday Wisdom pros back with us. I think this might be uh, number four, number five for you, but uh, our guest today is Michelle Meyer. Uh, if you're new to the program, Michelle was a college athlete, a college coach. She was also the NIL coordinator uh, for San Diego State University and all of their uh, in teams and athletes. She is the founder and director of her own company, the NIL Network, probably, you know, if not the, one of the leading authorities on all things NIL. Uh, she does webinars, she does programs, uh, you know, really uh, has her finger on the pulse of uh, the NIL <laughs> phenomenon, which she's going to yeah. share today. It's it's an ever-changing landscape, but uh, Michelle, welcome back. And what do you got for our listeners today on Wednesday Wisdom? Yeah, thanks, Jake. Uh, yeah, keeping the finger on the pulse of NIL is uh, not a uh, not an easy task because of the ever-changing gosh, environment that we're currently living in, whether it's uh, directly has to do with NIL or some of the other issues currently going on in college sports. But what I wanted to talk about today um, is a bit about just running back the, the history of NIL, kind of got how we got to July 1st of 2021. And then we'll fast forward to this year and talk about a little bit of uh, the Groundhog's Day that I'm uh, seeing here. So um, just for, for listeners that really didn't um, or weren't really paying attention to NIL before it went into effect. Obviously now in two years, it's grabbed a lot of headlines, but I started NIL Network in the fall of 2020 really as a um, resource and a place for people to go to understand all these changes that were coming to college sports. And at that point, I started studying it very, very closely, trying to keep my finger on the pulse of everything that was going on. And what was super interesting and it, uh, a, a misconception, I guess, about why NIL started was because of the Supreme Court case um, in June of 2021, everyone says, oh, because of the Olson case, that's what really made NIL thing. But you actually go back before that, California passed their first state NIL law in 2019 with an enactment date of 2023. And then Florida got in there in 2020 and put their enactment date of July 1st of 2021. Um, that started this cascade of, of movement from states saying, we can't have Florida having NIL rights for their athletes and not our athletes in our state. That's obviously a very big uh, recruiting advantage for Florida and the other states would be missing out um, on being able to tell their athletes that they could monetize their name, image, and likeness. Also at that time, the NCAA had an NIL working group that was working on um, their own proposal and recommendations that would essentially update uh, the NCAA rule book to allow athletes to monetize their NIL with some guardrails around it. Now, when this group met in January of 2021 to actually present um, the recommendations to then President Mark Emmert, um, they put them out there and Mark Emmert was approached by the Department of Justice who said, you cannot actually, or I would recommend you not um, updating your rules with these recommendations because it could open up some more, basically litigation. NCAA has had so many lawsuits in the past couple of decades and the Department of Justice says, you'll just get them again. And at that point, they pumped the brakes and said, okay, we are going to table these recommendations indefinitely. To be honest, they're still kind of tabled two and a half years later. Um, and basically just put a pause on it, right? And so that caused a lot of other states to go, well, if the NCAA is not going to do it, we are going to have to pass our own state NIL law. And why I think this is very significant to not only just NIL, but the overall like state of college sports is at that point we had, you know, university presidents and head coaches and athletic directors that were going to their state governments and saying, if we don't get this in place by July 1st of 2021, you're going to cause irreparable damage to our university and all the universities in our state because they won't have NIL rights. And the states did it. And they passed these really, really quick bills to go into effect on July 1st. I think we had, I don't know, 20 or so bills that started July 1st. But as we know, June 30th of 2021 is when the NCAA put their interim NIL policy in place. Very, very basic. The three kind of rules in it, you have to have a quid pro quo activity for compensation. You can't have anything contingent on enrollment or continued enrollment at any particular school. And you can't have anything that is paid for play. So 
like incentivizing performance on the field or the court. So saying every touchdown you throw, you'll get another thousand dollars or whatever that might look like. So off that went at that point, it didn't really matter if you had a state law, a state NIL law or not. July 1st, 500,000 ish NCAA athletes could take advantage of their NIL. So that's how we got there. Since then, we've had additional guidance from the NCAA. I want to say probably three or four times that they put out memos to the schools saying, and this is just guidance, but you know, um, collectives are, are are considered boosters, so they have to play by the same rules as boosters. Um, some other different guidance in place. So coming up to this year now of 2023, the most recent kind of guidance the NCAA put out. Um, was saying uh, basically that they, well, they were going to start investigating a lot of different schools for NIL infractions, that they didn't want, you know, collectives in-house or uh, employees out there negotiating NIL um, contracts on behalf of their athletes. And so what some of the states started to do was to amend their state NIL laws and adding a clause in it that says sports Entity organization, I think, is how they use most of the verbiage. They're not naming the NCAA directly, but that's who they're talking about. Cannot investigate any NIL infractions within our state or any of the universities within our state. Which, to me, again, looking back at 2021 and seeing all of these states that saw like how valuable it was to have a state NIL law and how much it would be a disadvantage to not have one or to not have their athletes have NIL rights. And now these, uh, you know, state officials are amending their laws to basically uh, to help all of the colleges in their state and give them another benefit so they could then exceed beyond that recruiting advantage. Um, and CAA Bema that came out said, you have to follow our rules, not your state NIL law, which is also very interesting. And what that has brought about is now four new federal bills for NIL uh, proposed by different state of um, uh, uh, senators or House of Representatives. Um, and I feel like we're back in 2021 now. Sorry, in 2021, we had eight different federal bills proposed. Um, none of them passed. None of them got anywhere. And um, we're kind of in the same place again with states amending their laws, four new federal bills, and now NCAA working group trying to have the same type of recommendations they had before with a third party administrator to collect all the deal database, um, to have a registry for agents and collectives. A lot of these different things that the Department of Justice said, I don't know if you can do before. So um, I personally don't think a federal bill is going to be passed anytime soon. I am not sure where the NCAA versus state NIL laws will end up. Um, I know that a couple of different attorneys that I've spoke to have said, you know, like, because the NCAA is a national organization with that interstate commerce um, and it's a member association, like they can just kick out schools that don't want to play by their rules or that are going by their state laws. But obviously it has a lot of different complications to it. No, I'm not an attorney, but it's a very interesting space again, and it's ever evolving. <laughs> uh, I, I Again, I really appreciate you giving that little history review and also, you know, sharing some of the things going on. And as you said, it's impossible to predict, you know, what a coach is going to do. It's even harder to predict what a politician <laughs> is going to do. Um, and I mean, here's what's Here's what's crazy for me, and, and you're not responsible for dealing with my crazy. Um, you have these athletes, um, and it's great, um, I guess. They're getting millions of dollars in NIL deals, and I know that's not the majority. But, uh, and you talk about the NCAAs, they, they can legislate, or they can regulate, or they can discipline. Um, here's a kid, you know, making millions. And Jim Harbaugh gets suspended for buying kids hamburgers. Uh, it, it just crazy. Um, let me put you on the spot. Where do you see this going? I mean, you and I talked before yeah. we came on realignment. You know, that's certainly dollars driven. Uh, forget about the student athlete. You know, it's all about the money. Uh, where do you see this going? You know, you. Um, yeah. you're an athlete, you're a coach, you know, now you, like I said, you know, you know, the NIL is as good as anybody. Where do you see it going? What's your prediction? 
Um, I guess like outside of NIL, I will say that it, it, revenue sharing is coming. Um, what that exactly looks like is still up in the air. Um, I, but I think it'll be here in some capacity in the next couple of years. Um, I think on the NIL side, what's a really interesting piece of the conversation now, you know, you have almost every, I think every power five has a collective, um, this type of organization that has popped up new business meant to source and facilitate NIL opportunities for athletes of a specific university. Um, now, if you follow closely, you know that a lot of those collectives are uh, fundraising through the same donors that are donating to the athletic department. Um, personally, I think that that was a uh, like a quick fix um, to stay up with, you know, to not fall behind in recruiting. And I think it was easy to go kind of after the same donors and boosters and kind of fill that for a bit. But I don't think that's sustainable, like at all. <laughs> and I don't think that's even a model that athletic departments should really be embracing or should want this donor led model that that's, you know, their their bread and butter as well within their development department. Um, and so what I'm hoping and what I've, I've started to do with a couple different universities, because I think that it is something that has kind of been overshadowed because of this donor led model with the collectives and the schools have spent a lot of time and energy there is, I mean, real NIL is going to happen at the local level with local businesses for the majority of athletes. Of course, you're going to have your high profile athletes that are signing with Pepsi and Gatorade and, you know, those big national brands, but for 99% of athletes, it's going to be like the local pizza shop, right? Or, you know, things like that, that are actually really cool opportunities for the athletes to, you know, like gain professional development skills to build their network with, I've seen a couple now that have graduated out and gone to work for companies that they have um, done NIL partnerships with while they're in college, like some really cool opportunities at the local level. However, local businesses have no freaking clue still how to do this because they just haven't been really like nurtured on NIL or why they would engage or what kind of ROI they should expect to see. And so what I think and what I'm hoping will happen is schools will start putting a little bit more focus on, you know, how do we bring in these local businesses um, or educate them at least about NIL opportunities. And that'll alleviate some of the need for these collectives to be fundraising, you know, millions and millions of dollars from the same donors that they are that are donating to the athletic department every year. Uh, I think it's gonna be a long process because I think they need a lot of help and support. Um, but that's kind of where I'm hoping at least that this can write this pathway a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I, I, again, just so many moving pieces and, uh, you know, a lot of different agendas out there too. Um, Let's go and share, you know, with our listeners, returning and new listeners, um, about your venture, NIL Network. Uh, you know, what is it? What sort of resources are out there? And again, it's primarily, I think, focused for college, but uh, I think it's good for high school coaches and ADs to be aware of these resources as well, because they're sending kids on to college. So uh, share a little bit about NIL Network. Yeah, I mean, I think that the how it can be most utilized for for coaches or ADs or even high school or high school ADs and high school coaches, club coaches, that kind of thing, as well as their athletes. Um, as this becomes more of a part of the recruiting conversation, and I'm not talking about the, again, the top one percent um, that have you know a lot of support and and they're getting a lot of offers from their collectives and things, but for the athletes that want to get started in it and are looking to engage in the NIL space in some capacity once they get to college. Um, some of the resources up there that I think that can be helpful. I've got a university NIL program database. So like if an athlete is looking at, let's say 10 different schools, they can go on there and see what the different resources, um, whether that's some education, if they have courses, if they have like a marketplace that they have their athletes on, like how is the school supporting their athletes in NIL outside of kind of that collective activity? So I think that's a good place to to look and to start understanding. Um, and again, it's not going to be part or like the full part of a recruiting conversation, but it is starting to become an element of it. Um, so I think that can be helpful. There's also an athlete hub up there that has a lot of different articles and recordings and podcasts about just getting started in the space. So if you're looking to build your brand or your platform, um, there's some free courses up there that I would recommend checking out. And um, 
Yeah. And other than that, for the most part, for the work that I do, I work with, I'm help, help the helper. So I'm helping the the ones that are helping the athletes, um, educating them on the kind of the whole landscape, working with, um, you know, universities or different service providers that are going and helping and signing with athletes. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot up there. Uh, it's two and a half, coming up on three years now. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and if one of our listeners is they have been, uh, you know, hearing about everything that's going on in the NIL space, if they want to reach out and pick your brain a little bit more or find out more about the resources on your uh, website, go ahead and give out that information. Yeah. So once a month, I host this open Q and a where anybody can jump on and really get their NIL questions, uh, answered. So I think that's probably the best kind of pick your brain opportunity. Um, other than that, we're on, uh, Instagram at NIL Network and the website's nilnetwork.com. Okay. And uh, Michelle's also very active on LinkedIn. Uh, it's a good way to connect and follow all the things going on uh, with this ever changing world of NIL. Michelle, always great to uh, spend some time with you. Um, hopefully, you can uh, find your way out to Orlando in December for the National Athletic Director Conference. I know you got a very busy schedule, but I think that'd be a great way to connect. But uh, all the best moving forward. And uh, again, appreciate you spending time with our audience. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. For our listeners, uh, we do this every Wednesday and we upload the Zoom recordings to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. Of course, we appreciate you listening. Come back next week and just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time. Always great to spend time with Michelle Meyer. Um, before we go, we do want to acknowledge our sponsors. Uh, Home Campus, go to homecampus.com. Hometown Ticketing, uh, hometownticketing.com, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Uh, great products, check them out at sidelineinteractive.com. Athletic surveys by Lifetrack, uh, let them help you take the pulse of your parents and your student athletes. That's sideline, excuse me, athleticsurveys.com. Uh, Vital Signs Wall of Fame, uh, their interactive touchscreen boards are a great way to showcase your school, your school record holders, and tell stories. Uh, Vitalsignswalloffame.com. Huddle. Huddle.com. Uh, as a football coach, I used Huddle. As an AD, we were a Huddle school. Go to Huddle.com for more information. Uh, Snap Mobile is the parent company. Snap Raise is the website. Go to SnapRaise.com. Check out their entire suite of platforms. And finally, Gipper. Go to Gipper.com. Start creating custom content for your school's social media channel. That's Gipper.com. We'll see you next time on Wednesday Wisdom. Thanks again for listening.